Good morning, John Adamson with See No Evil, the intersection of politics and religion. How do you like that for a tag? Maybe maybe I'll start with that. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. Uh, I hope that this will grow at some point, and uh, that is that is my purpose partly for doing it, and partly it's just catharsis because I feel like I'm talking to somebody that cares about what's going on in this country. So what kind of evil are we seeing? Well, to better describe the evil, let me give you the word of the day. Chicanery. The use of trickery to achieve a political, financial, or legal purpose. Well, I chose that word. Actually, a friend of mine suggested it when we were having a conversation, and I was talking about shenanigans, and he said chicanery, and I thought, that's even better. That's a better word. So what kind of chicanery is going on? Even if all the votes were 100% legit, even if, there is a right, first of all, to a recount. So don't give us, you know, how good the election process is and it's unlikely that Trump will overturn the votes and Scott Walker said, you know, he's only seen it overturn about 300 uh, in states. It doesn't matter. If there is chicanery, if there is cheating, there needs to be a recount. The, the processes that allowed cheating to occur, or chicanery, need to be ferreted out so that the next elections will be even better. So it's good that we do these post-election analyses of what happened and get to the root cause of the problem. Because even a 1% issue changes an entire election. But you might say, well, John, you know, Biden won the popular vote, vote by more than 1%. So as it's tallied now, yes, he has greater than a 1% lead on Trump. However, that's not how elections are won. The popular vote does not decide it. It is the Electoral College. So there's that kind of thing going on. There's the chicanery of eyewitnesses with video footage to back them up showing chicanery like one man caught on video obviously getting frustrated with what he was seeing on the ballots as he was counting them and ball balling them up certain ones and throwing them to the side we have video over the heads of two election result counters making changes to them to ballots Filling them in. We have video of poll workers wearing Biden paraphernalia, which is illegal during the election. So we have a lot of chicanery that needs to be investigated. I pointed out to somebody that the statistical impossibility of what was it, 127,000 votes in Michigan just showing up and suddenly supporting Biden is just ridiculous. It's, it's irrefutable. Um, even if Michigan was as liberal as Washington, D.C., which it is not, you would not see that kind of breaking towards one candidate and one candidate only. Somebody posted a meme which... She thought settled the discussion, which showed a Seinfeld uh, meme clip where Jerry is talking to Elaine and and Jerry poses the question, you know, how could this be that uh, all of them broke towards Biden and, and Elaine, it, you know, it's a meme, obviously, it didn't happen in the show. And Elaine says, because Trump told all his voters to vote in person, not by mail-in, as though that solves it. And I pointed out the logical problems with that. One, all of us Trump supporters don't follow everything Dear Leader says. So some people are going to choose to vote by mail whether Trump says or not. And also, we got to remember, there are legal mail-in votes. Those would be uh, ones that you would ask for ahead of time and have to prove that you are who you say you are. And then there are those votes that were just sent out willy-nilly every place. 
which we're seeing lots of problems with. So there's a lot of chicanery, a lot of evil, because chicanery is evil. Notice what it says, the use of trickery to achieve political or other gains or purposes. There's another kind of evil that we're seeing right now. This is a confirmed tweet because I am following her from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, also known as AOC. She tweeted this just a couple days ago. Well, it was on November 6th, so three days ago. Is anyone archiving these Trump psychophants for when they try to downplay or deny their complicity in the future? I foresee decent probability of many deleted tweets, writings, photos in the future. Is anybody archiving? Is anybody keeping tabs on these Trump psychophants or supporters? That doesn't sound too good, AOC. What about Don Lemon? You know who Don Lemon is? He's a commentator, I mean reporter for CNN. And this is what... He said, well, this is a news article on him and then his actual words. CNN's Don Lemon shares why he has trouble being friends with people who support President Donald Trump. Lemon likened Trump supporters to a cult or an addiction, and he feels he must try to help them. Lemon said Trump supporters need to be deprogrammed before they are allowed to vote. Listen to this. If I... This is him. If I had a real friend who was involved in a cult, which I feel it is cultish behavior, I must try to help them, Lemon said. And you only go so far until you say, until you reach your bottom. I cannot deal with it. It's like an addiction. Until you reach bottom and you want help, I can't deal with it. Here's how I feel about it. I don't care about whether you're right or left. I've been right. I was young a young Republican, and left. I am ind independent now, and I am an independent thinker, and I believe in reality. I believe in facts. I believe one plus one equals two. And so when I'm talking with to people who not are smart, but who think they are smart, there's a difference between being smart and thinking you're smart. Then I have to, I got to let you go, Lemon said. So what is Lemon saying here? What is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying here? Well, uh, first of all, we're, we're cults. We're psychophants. We just will do whatever the dear leader tells us to do. Um, and we're complicit in whatever alleged crimes, crimes that he's committed. I don't know. Um, and, then, and then we're going to run for our lives and, and hide how we've supported Trump. Because Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez must think we're smart enough to be concerned about the coming tide of brown shirts that's going to go check on us. But, but wait a minute, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Lemon thinks that we're not that smart. That we think we're smart. And so he's done trying to help us because we're just in a cult. Because he's real smart. Oh, yeah. You know, I saw a lot of uh, tweets, Facebook posts, etc. that perpetuated this idea from the leftist perspective. That they're smart, we're dumb. But more than that, more than that, what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is indicating here is that you and I who might support Trump are evil. We're evil. And this deprogramming suggests that we have moral and intellectual inferiority. You know, back in the day called school, I had to read stuff in school that I, I really didn't like. I... 
you know, tell you honestly, mentally, I was not very smart back in high school. Um, I was smart. I was lazy. Let's put it that way. I was extremely lazy. I didn't decide to become a student until I got to college. And I went, you know what? I've got a brain on my head. I can do this. And then, of course, I went to seminary. And I studied hard. And I did it. Did it well. Did it with honors. But that doesn't mean that my argumentation is valid. Just because I think I'm a rather smart guy. That alone does not make it a valid argument. But what the left assumes is a 1984 Orwellian perspective that only some should have control of the flow of information because the rest are just too stupid to decipher it for themselves. And the left has a, a moral obligation to deprogram us. And if you read in the past, or as I recently reread, and I reread uh, some of it. George Orwell's 1984. And I've read it more than once. And I've watched the movie, which was rather disturbing. The whole idea of re deprogramming or reprogramming is kind of a scary concept. That somehow there would be means used. Now, they would say through education. And our education system has deprogrammed and reprogrammed many. But there are more draconian means by which deprogramming or reprogramming can be taken. And unless people like Don Lemon and AOC are stopped in their rhetoric, some, perhaps with less intelligence than them, might take that to heart that we really need to be deprogrammed. You know, a friend advocated for this deprogramming, reprogramming, and I, I asked by what means this might occur. You know, if we make Trumpian comments or pro-conservative points, should we have some kind of monetary value for uh, being, you know, reprimanded for that statement? Should we have to pay a fine? Should there be internment camps where we are indoctrinated to a good leftist perspective so that we are morally and, and, uh, and critically thinking superior after that so that we can safely be allowed to vote after that point. Should we, you know, even have more draconian methods applied to us? You might remember a scene from 1984 where uh, the main character, the hero, has a cage strapped to his face with rats, hungry rats, rats that had been deprived of any food at the other end of the cage, and there's two doors blocking them to get to his face. And the interrogators are trying to get him to renounce his free thought that he's got. And so they lift up one door, and the rats jump forward trying to get to his face because they're starving. And, of course, he's flipping out. I'd be flipping out. And then the guy goes to lift the second door. And then suddenly the guy is out. And then that, that's where the scene cuts. I don't remember if in the book if it's quite portrayed that way. But, anyway, the bottom line is the guy loses his mind from the torture they put him through. And uh, he goes on to love Big Brother. He f feels deep in his heart a love for Big Brother. And Big Brother, of course, is the totalitarian regime of the left in this book. That is how people on the left sometimes view those on the right. Now, I won't say that I don't view, I, I do view people on the left as being wrong. But I don't necessarily view them as being evil. I, I believe that they wouldn't go and willy-nilly run over a puppy, for example. Uh, most of them have kids that I, that I know personally. And uh, they're, they, some of them are, from what I can see at least, are pretty good parents. So I, I don't, you know, they love their kids. They provide for them. 
uh, <clears throat> you know, you could tell the kids seem to be pretty happy with them. I'm not going to call them evil. I think they're wrong. I think their policy ideas are wrong. And I think what's benefited them is the fact that left leftism has not completely taken over this country and conservatism still has a lot of lasting benefits, even though we're seeing it erode over time. So we still see conservatism, the benefits thereof, meeting the needs of these left, leftists in terms of the, the jobs they can get, the education they can get, the freedoms they enjoy are because of conservative values, not the full propagation of leftist values. And again, that's why I think all leftists should go to former Soviet bloc countries and see the devastating, lasting effects from that system of government for 70 years. Now, what about Christians? How should we respond when people believe that re-educating you will root out all your evil or that they are the source of all that is morally good and right? Because that's really a leftist perspective. Leftism, or let's put it more uh, succinctly, is Marxism is a godless, by nature, See, it's always going to be a truck near this stop. I need to, I need to find a new stop to video. So now you're going to hear the beeping in the background. Um, where, where was I going? That leftists, Marxists, do not believe in a god. Even Wikipedia, which is not conservative friendly, points out that Marxism is atheistic. And when you're atheistic, well the final arbiter of moral right is the individual, and in their case, those that believe in Marxism, them. But this all goes back to a Christian worldview, which makes it clear that man is the originator of sin and all men are impacted by that. Where, where am I going with this? Let me restate this so it's a little bit more clear. By Genesis chapter 3, we see this in play, where this, the temptation by Satan is not just to Eve to eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but is that she will have her eyes opened and she will be like God. What is the first commandment? that God gives in Exodus chapter 20. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. We are not individually the arbiters of what is morally right and morally wrong. If there is a creator God, then he created all moral right and wrong. And what he says as the creator, he has that right. If he's the creator of all things, he has the right to say what is right and what is wrong, not the individual. And that should bring about a great deal of humility, not intellectual superiority. That should bring about the possibility that you would think that maybe what I am saying is not 100% accurate or 100% right. And I need to listen to other people just to make sure that what I'm about to say, what I'm proposing is accurate and true and right. But that's not the perspective of the Marxist, those on the left, because there is no God they are right, and they are morally superior because of that. And with that, I'm going to leave you, bid you a fond farewell for today. I hope you take care. God bless. And don't forget, please like and subscribe. Bye now.